Okay, today I wanted to show the new linkage. Look at that. You can tell that the end point looks very adjustable, and it is. I have to get to. Hopefully, it'll make some sense. There. There's a shift arm. You notice that there are three Allen head set screws holding it onto the shift shaft itself. It makes it very adjustable for the angle of attack. And then along the radius length of the arm, we have adjustments available as well as length of rod. But yesterday when I was up in the vehicle itself, Nick was checking the shift point detent locations as I was going through the shifter and everything from park reverse neutral overdrive drivers hitting dead on with the pointer on the shifter and it felt good so there we go a little later I'll take a video of me going to the shifter gearing meantime we're gonna go ahead and check the throttle valve pressure and wrap this puppy up for the day Okay, so what we're going to do now, we check the transmission oil level before starting the engine. It is just below the fill cross hatches on the dipstick. So once it starts and runs, some of the air inside the clutch packs and stuff, and the transmission will get filled with oil, so we might have to add a half quart or so. Meantime, we have an oil pressure gauge that is connected to the transmission oil pressure test port and normally for these things we would put a special block where the throttle valve cable is on the driver's side of the carburetor and when the engine is warmed up and idling in neutral look for 35 pounds of pressure or more now in my case the other week, I wanted to increase the shift point speeds, so I increased the throttle valve pressure. I never bothered measuring to see what it was at with a little gap gauge. Okay, whenever you're ready there, Nick. No rush. When we check the throttle valve oil pressure of the transmission, it's normally done with a special spacer tool that is placed at the cable for the throttle valve linkage at the carburetor. And we're looking for 35 pounds of pressure or higher. In our case, I found when the tool was removed, the pressure would drop to zero pounds. Today, I'm not bothering using that spacer tool because I want higher pressures than the normal starting point. So with no gauge tool installed, if I have more than zero pounds of pressure, I'm good. And I've done this to increase the speed at which the transmission upshifts occur. I thought I would show how the OEM shifter is working out. So here, I'm in park. Now, just as it shows, I'm in reverse. I felt the car lurch into reverse. There's neutral. That says D for drive, but that's actually on the AOD overdrive and that is drive not overdrive but drive as in gears one two and three only it won't go into overdrive and that is as far back as this will go because there is no sixth gear position on the AOD but the nice thing 
is that this now has a shift indicator that matches the D10 position of the transmission because of the highly adjustable shift rod that we put in and also the shift shaft arm that is highly adjustable. Well, it turns out that I was not entirely correct when I said that there is no shift point on the shifter lower than the drive position where we have overdrive and drive. When I was in the Mach 1 driving home from the shop, I was going from overdrive to drive just to see how much RPM difference there was when I was in overdrive versus direct drive. And I decided, hey, I'm going to see if I move this down one notch more and see at what point the D10 stops my efforts. And I found that when I put the transmission from drive to overdrive, the engine RPM would drop and overdrive back to drive, it would go up when the transmission was in direct drive, one-to-one -one ratio of input shaft speed, output shaft speed. But when I moved the shifter down to the number one position, I dropped to yet a lower gear again. In my case, traveling at 50 miles an hour, I dropped into second gear. So I was able, through the shifter, to be in the overdrive position, which is the green letter D, dropping back to the number two position was actually the AOD's drive, direct drive, and when I dropped down to selector position number one, it dropped down to second gear. This was totally unexpected, and I'm going to research that and see if anyone else has observed that behavior. But I thought that was pretty cool. The upshifting from gear position number one on the shifter, which is second gear in the AOD, to the number two gear selector position, which is drive, upshifted properly. And when I moved it back up into the green D position, the transmission did go into overdrive as it was expected to. Transmission performed flawlessly.